Uh, Cindy, I think you're ready for for the updates. So please. Uh, okay. Um, yes. Hello. Um. Again. <laughs> I'll be providing the uh, regulatory updates um, for the um, from September 4th to yesterday, September 10th. And so just to start, um, on September 4th, the FDA issued a constituent update from the Deputy Commissioner for Human Foods regarding efforts to enhance food traceability. So in this um, constituent update, they essentially just talked about how they met up with the food industry to discuss how they're going to implement the food traceability final rule, which is a key component of the food uh, FDA Food Safety Modernization Act. And when fully implemented, it will greatly enhance public health by facilitating um, faster identification as well as a faster removal of the potentially contaminated food from the market. Um, and on the same day, the FDA issued a veterinarian letter um, detailing the federal requirements for the role of the vet in dispensing prescription animal drugs, as well as establishing um, the requirements for vet client patient relationships over the course of the practice. And that also includes some telemedicine um, guidelines. Um, and then on September 5th, 2024, um, the FDA granted full approval of Phil's Pari um, by Traver Therapeutics. And it this drug is indicated to slow kidney function decline in adults with primary IgA nerf nephropathy who are at a risk of disease progression. So uh, Phil's Pari is the only non-immunosuppressive treatment that significantly slows this kidney function decline due to IgA N. And it was granted an accelerated approval back in February of 2023 based on the surrogate market marker of proteinuria. Um, the full approval is based on a long-term uh, long term conf confirmatory, confirmatory uh, results from a study that demonstrates uh, the Phil's party that the drug significantly slows kidney function decline over the course of two years compared to Erbsartan which I think is the what the standard of care was. Um, and it was thus, based on the results of that study, it was given full approval on this day, September 5th. Um, on the same day, the FDA also released news that the youth e-cigarette use drops to the lowest in a decade. So the number of youths who used e-cigarettes in 2024 is approximately one third of what it was at its peak in 2019. When over when there were over five million youths reported um, with current e-cigarette use, so that's really exciting news in regards to public health. Um, and then on September 6, twenty twenty four, um, the FDA issued a guidance draft titled "Incorporating Voluntary Patient Preference Information Over the Total Product Life Cycle." And this recommend, I mean, this guidance essentially provided recommendations on how the patient preference information might be collected and shared with the FDA, as well as how that information might potentially be considered and used in the FDA decision making processes. It also provided recommendations on designing patient preference studies that may provide reliable scientific evidence. And because this is still a guidance draft, um, people can still comment on it if you guys want. Um, I think the deadline is November something. I don't remember what exact date, but it's somewhere in November. Um, so yeah, uh, on the same day, the FDA also issued an advisory of salmonella outbreak linked to eggs from Milo's Poultry Farm. Um, the uh, Milo's Poultry ended up voluntarily recalling all of their eggs supplied by their farms after the FDA investigation found the outbreak strain in their egg samples. And on this day, there were 65 people infected, uh, 65 people that were reported to be infected across nine states. Be careful. And then on September 9th, uh, 2024, the FDA advisory committee met to discuss a new drug, new drug application of oral silopenem by Iterum Therapeutics for uncomplicated urinary tract infections in adult patients. And during the discussion, they talked about the they discussed uh, they talked about the antimicrobial stewardship issues that are going to be raised by the potential approval and subsequent use of what 
is essentially the first oral PNM in the U.S. And during the discussion, they also talked about what the most appropriate target patient population for the treatment of UUTI would be with this drug. Um, and overall, the committee determined that if approved, oral solopenem would provide substantial benefit to a subset of patients. However, there is a risk for off-label use as well as a risk to the risk to the community and individuals in terms of the spread of antimicrobial resistance. So they determined that there should be a plan regarding post-marketing analysis and that there should also be observations and reporting of changes in terms of the rates of antimicrobial resistance that may occur once it's approved and used. Um, this meeting will heavily influence the FDA's final decision for the NDA on October 25th just next month. Um, and then on September 10th, 2024, um, the FDA Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, CEDAR, and CBM Center for Veterinary Medicine issued a warning letter to root bioscience brands doing business as Nadronol for illegally selling CBD, CBG, and CBN products for people and pets. So they were making false claims, unproven claims that their products can treat multiple diseases in people, including Alzheimer's, um, substance, use substance use disorder, autism, and high blood pressure. And they also made unproven claims that their animal products can treat conditions such as separation anxiety, pain, arthritis, and skin ailments. And so the FDA deemed that because they are making these claims, um, they are considered drugs, but because they didn't go through the approval process, they are violating the Food and Drugs and Cosmetics Food Drugs and Cosmetics Act. Um, so the FDA requested a response from the company within 15 working days, stating how they will correct the violations. So that is still pending. And then um, on the same day, on the brighter side, <laughs> the FDA announced the commission of an independent literature review and the initiation of an internal bench laboratory study to evaluate metals and tampons. And they essentially want to measure the amount of metals that come out of tampons under conditions that mimic normal use. And this will enable the FDA to have a complete risk assessment of the metals contained in the tampons based on the worst case scenario of metal exposure. And it will help pr provide a better understanding of the data currently available regarding the presence of such chemicals and metals in the tampons, as well as any of the associated health effects that come with it. So um, that's something that we should look closely at as it occurs in the next few months. And then these are my references. And yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Cindy.